This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, we're going to look into the future and see if Amos has seen Mortal Kombat. Uh, that could be taken a couple ways, and I'm sure one of them is true. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 283 for Sunday, the 25th of April, 2021. Happy birthday, Ashley. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. He doesn't matter because it's all about me today. <laughs> all right. Well, um, all about Amos is what we're going to talk about. Um, no, no doubt actually, it. that's, uh, that's not what we're going to do. Um, no. Um, <sighs> I, okay, go, yeah. go ahead, because I got something I want to talk about, and it's something that, that certain people, uh, uh, listeners of the show, are going to absolutely hate, but that's only one of them, so I don't care. Okay, well, all right, really, the only thing I was going to bring up in the first little segment was uh, the new Mortal Kombat movie came out on mm-hmm. HBO Max mm-hmm. and, and in theaters, presumably. My theater's not open yet. <laughs> um, but we did we did watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, have, have you seen it? Of course not. You're right, you're right. Okay. Um, I got to say, I enjoyed the movie um, pretty much exactly how I thought I was going to enjoy it. The story was acceptable. It was fine. <laughs> it was fine. Um, but that's not what you're there to see a Mortal Kombat movie for. Right. You're there to see action and violence and just raw, holy fuck moments. And uh, the movie delivered. Yeah. Uh, it definitely had all of that. And like I said, the story was fine, so it wasn't. Uh, I mean, if you were, if you're already accepting the concept of Mortal Kombat as a movie, like there's not any like jump the shark type stuff that gotcha. makes, that takes you out of that. So, I thought it was good. How so closely like, how closely aligned is it to the original Mortal Kombat movie from like uh, the late '90s? Oh no, 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 nope. totally even totally the, different story. It's not like a retelling. It's a complete reimagining. It, well, they're both. I would say they're both equally based on the game. Okay. Uh, but they they take a different uh, a different path, I guess. So gotcha. I mean, it's, I mean, there's definitely similarities. Like some characters are the same. Um, uh, like plot points are the same. Like you know, there's a tournament, and the Outworld is going to invade Earth if they don't win. Uh, but th- other than that, and the character crossovers, like that's that's about where the similarities end. That's cool. Um, yeah, it was it, it's a fun watch. I. I uh, encourage anybody with HBO Max to give it a shot. Gotcha. Um, I want to talk about the Apple Spring Spring Loaded event. Okay. Did they announce um, faster, um, more robust versions of their of their uh, previously available hardware? Yes. Cool. So you didn't. Sorry, wa- I missed it. So you, you didn't watch it. I did not. Okay. Um, one thing that I want to mention, and then a few things that uh, that I, I have some thoughts on. Okay. Uh, first thing I want to mention is purple iPhone 12. Okay. Why wasn't that always a thing? That's what I wanted to begin with. That would have sold me back then. Now we're mid cycle. I can't quite do it. Plus, it's only in the iPhone 12 and 12 Mini, not in the 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max. Mm. So kind of a bummer there. Hopefully that'll color color selection has never ever been a, a factor for me because the first thing I do with a new iPhone is put it in an Otter box. Right. Yeah. It, it, I can see that not mattering to you at all, but for me it matters. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, th- the next thing is Air Tags. Air Tags look pretty cool. They're tile. Ah. They're essentially tile with built-in um, uh, features into the OS and slightly cheaper with replaceable battery, which is key. Right. Um, right. And, and it ties into the find my. Yes. App, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, direct integration. And then you had the Apple TV 4k 60 with the new remote. The new remotes kind of ex- exciting. I will use that. I will buy that remote to replace my current remotes, but I'm not upgrading my Apple TV and I wouldn't buy that remote standalone because 60 bucks is a little much for a remote itself. But if I have to replace a remote, I'm definitely going with that one. Right, right. Um, yeah, because that's that's. I mean, I have no reason to upgrade my uh, Apple TV 4K, but but a new remote, 
hmm, <laughs> maybe because that yeah. the current remote is garbage. Not great. Yeah. Uh, but, but here's the thing, though. I don't even have a 4K television, so I'm not going to upgrade my 4K or my non 4K Apple TVs. And I'm certainly not going to do it for a remote that I can eventually buy separately. And then the remote being $60 is price prohibitive to make it a just, a, you know, it, it, that's a good replacement price. I don't disagree with the price because the old one was $79 if you want to replace it. So this oh, is actually, good Lord. yeah, this is actually a little cheaper than that. But it's a good replacement price. I mean, it's, it's a it's a sophisticated piece of technology. I get it. But it's not cheap enough for me to go out and buy one of those to replace a currently working Apple remote. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, next up on the list, uh, this is kind of in order of least interesting to me to most interesting to me. Anything I don't mention obviously wasn't as important to me as the purple iPhone 12 I won't be buying and would cover with the case anyway. <clears throat> um New IMAX, new multicolored IMAX. Initially, I was in love. It's M1. It's got it's got all the same specs, and everything else. I've been looking at the M1 system. I for, was for sure buying a new IMAX whenever they were announced with the M1. Um, this comes in the different colors. This explains the purple because they have the purple IMAX. They needed a purple phone to match, so you can have the phone, the <laughs> keyboard, the mouse, the trackpad, and the IMAX all in the same colors. I get it. I totally get it. Um, mm. However, it is still the M1 chip, not the M1X or M2. So we know there's an upgrade pending because that's it's not going to take Apple long to announce the upgrade. Mm-hmm. And it's only a 24-inch screen. It's 4.5K, but it's only a 24-inch screen. And I was really looking forward to the new 27-inch version of the iMac. So mm. I'm on the fence about this. I've got until Friday to pre-order. Of course, I got until fucking forever in a day to actually order one if I just want one later. Um, initially, I was sold. I was going to buy one. I had it already figured out, already budgeted in my head and everything else because I've been kind of saving up for it. Um, mm. <clears throat> and now I'm not sold on it. I might just go with the M1 Mac Mini because it's going to give me the same specs and I'll be able to use the monitors I currently have, which are 27-inch 4K monitors. So... They almost had me, is what I'm saying. I do like the MagSafe, yeah, MagSafe yeah. PowerPort, yeah, sound... uh, MagSafe PowerPort oh, right. with the yep. gigabit yep. Ethernet included in it, so you just have one plug going to the computer, unless you want to dongle your life because that's what you have to do now anyway. Which I clearly would have to do because I get too much equipment. Um, and I like the form factor. I think it's it's gorgeous, super thin. I don't mind the chin. Of course, I've never had an iMac, so I don't know if the chin really stands out that much against you. I do wish they'd include an Apple logo on it, but I, I understand the Visa mount will allow you to tilt it 90 degrees and the logo wouldn't tilt. That's an aesthetic thing. That's Apple for you. <clears throat> that's it. Okay. Yeah. Thoughts on that, Kent? Um, I was just going to say, you sound like me uh, with the with last year's iPhone announcement. I was all set to upgrade my iPhone. And then when they showed me what they had to offer, I was like, mm, not enough. I'm probably good for another year. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah. I definitely have to upgrade this year though, because I was going to buy some Air Tags until I found out, figured out that the most useful features of it is only available if you have a U1 chip, which the iPhone 10 does not have. It uh, it's came out on the iPhone yeah. 11, so that's I'm starting. I'm now starting to miss features that I actually want in my phone. Mm. So yeah. it's not just so it's upgrading current <laughs> features; it's I'm missing features. So yeah, yeah. this this yeah. this looks like definitely the year. To uh, well, I say you looks like, and then definitely, but this looks like the year that I will be upgrading my my phone. Um, yeah. Okay, so last but definitely not least, in fact, is the most, in my opinion, uh, M1 MacBook Pro or uh, iPad Pros. So they have ah uh, yes two models. Uh, one of them has the Pro Display XDR that the larger one does, and the smaller one does not. But everything else is essentially the same M1 sy- system inside. Um, beautiful looking machine, all the capabilities you could want. I am curious to see what they can do with the M1 in there with the current amount of amalgamation between Mac OS and iPad OS and see if that starts becoming a, more of a thing. So you can start running uh, Mac apps on the iPad. That'd be fucking phenomenal. And hopefully that'll get Adobe to, to, to you know, get into the game, and actually release Premiere Pro and Audition on the, on the iPad, which would be absolutely fucking phenomenal for my personal workflow. Holy shit. It would change the way I'd work completely if they did that. 
Um, so yeah, that one, if I was going to get an iMac, I was going to buy the new iPad Pro. If I'm holding off on the iMac, waiting for the 27, I will hold off on the iPad Pro. That is ah, which so only, it's kind of a, a, a package deal in your mind. Right, because the idea would be I need to I, I want to move back away from Windows. I want to go back into the Mac the Mac uh, 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 ecosystem. ecosystem, especially with me uh, occasionally having to go down to, well, I don't say have, but me going to Tacoma and needing to continue work down there while I'm there for a week at a time. I would like to have everything as simple as possible, and I'm currently on a Windows PC that honestly pisses me off every day, even though it's pretty fast. It's just got little quirks here and there that I can't stand. Mm -hmm. And I have a MacBook Pro uh, as my laptop, which runs great as long as it's plugged in. The battery just doesn't last long enough to do any mm -hmm. serious mobile work with. And that, yes, it is a new battery, and it still just doesn't last long enough. You know, because, I mean, you can get a couple hours out of it, but uh, that's not enough for, you know, when I... When I want to work mobile, I'm working mobile for a session, a full eight, you know, six, eight yeah, hour session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're and you're doing like video editing and stuff like that. And that. Like the the most battery hog thing that you can do. Right, right. So um, it's not quite there for that. But yeah, if when I switch, I'm going to switch all of it over at the same time. And I'm, especially with the cameras that I have and everything else, like everything would just be smoother. All indications, all reviews that I've seen. The, my entire workflow would be smoother for everything that I do except podcasting uh, and not, not editing audio, but actually podcasting itself. Right, um, recording and streaming. Right. Would be, all that would be easier on the Mac ecosystem and it would streamline things the way that, that, that I want them to be. So it's like I'm ready to jump. I just, I, I, they gave me a 99% solution, but I need a 100% solution to spend the money. And yep. that's that's where I'm yep. at with it. So I wouldn't say yeah, 99. They probably give me a 90. percent Right, right, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so that's where I'm at with the announcements from from Tuesday, 4:20, the spring loaded event, which is uh, uh, so much fun there. Uh, <laughs> loaded event. <laughs> yeah, loaded event on 4:20. Yeah, with all the colors and bright. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's my thoughts on all that. Um, almost there. I'm so close to being there. Like I'm not upgrading or repairing this computer anymore. That might be a catalyst. Uh, the 27-inch iMac with the M1 or M1X, hopefully the M1X, would be a catalyst. Um, or if I find out that there's a sudden rush of Mac apps, particularly the Adobe apps, available on iPad natively or at least true to form, that would be a catalyst. But that's where I'm at now. I'm waiting for one of those three things to happen or just a massive rush of money to hit my way that doesn't have to be paid back in any way, shape, or form. So if anybody wants to donate ten thousand dollars to Audio Aperture Media, I will upgrade all my shit. <laughs> so are you saying that you you can predict in the not super far distant future that you'll be upgrading to Mac products, Apple products? Probably. I'm <laughs> fairly fairly sure about that. Yeah that that is that is the trend my life is taking. Why do you ask? Why why would that be? That's a kind of an odd question, man. Why would you go with uh, Why would you go with that kind of line of questioning? Yeah, well, I'm I'm really curious this week about uh, your thoughts on the future in many different categories. Um, one of which is in the world of tech, uh, but not to be limited to tech. We're also going to discuss science, socioeconomics, politics. Um, a little bit of going to get a little bit personal about our predictions for the future. Hmm. Um, yeah, man. And we also asked our uh, Discord chat to participate. Mm -hmm. And I've got I've got a few responses from some of those folks as well. Awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and start with tech, because we were just talking about tech. Okay. Yep. We're gonna do we're gonna do our predictions for one year in the future, five years in the future, and ten years in the future. So I, I suggest that we do we run through all the categories for one year out first, and okay. then we transition to five year and so forth. Okay, okay. Um, I'll go, I'll go first. Uh, my tech, my, my tech prediction, this is almost more of a politics thing, but it, I think it's, it's sits squarely in the tech world. Um, I predict that within the next year, uh, end of 22, 2022 at the latest, there will be major legislation to affect the big five, the fame, um, to limit their reach. That's, uh, Facebook, Apple, uh, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. Yep. There will be some sort of major legislation that will limit their reach, and they will be p 
pissed about it. And it will have maybe uh, maybe it'll get stricken down. I can see that happening, but it'll definitely cause okay. waves through the community. Interesting. Okay, so I took kind of the opposite take on this. I said that that there will be further consolidation of tech companies uh, with one surpri- at least one really surprising major buyout. Mm. Um, I don't think so. S- same exact companies that I'm talking about um, that you mentioned: Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft. Um, I'm not saying any of those are going to to be bought out, but those companies are going to do some buyouts. Of some other companies. That's what that's what I think. But, is but going you're to talking you're talking like major buyouts though, like big companies, like if Apple bought Tesla. Kind yeah, of thing. I'm not. Well, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. St- stuff like that. I I don't predict predict that particular purchase, right. but uh, something of that magnitude, something that that everyone in the tech world is just going to be like, holy crap, this changes things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, moving on uh, to science now. Well, h- hang on a second. Let okay. Me, uh, let me look. Uh, oh, good lord! So some <laughs> some folks have uh, put a lot more in here than um, than others. Okay, so uh, Curtis uh, predicts a big push for AR. Five mm-hmm. um, G will still suck. Um, let's see. Twitter um, still not as as valuable on paper as it is socially, and the company will continue to have a crisis over it. Okay. Um, Zoom uh, will decline in popularity. And let's see some other highlights. He added a ton of stuff um, actually today. So, um, yeah, Discord is going to have uh, some some uh, negative uh, changes that's going to happen. Uh, we're going to add more streaming services. I, I pretty much guarantee that's going to happen. And um, um, less of an emphasis on smart TVs and more for uh, set top box improvements. Okay. Um, yeah, I um, I think most of these are um, are likely. Five G is still going to suck. Five G has a lot of promise, but we're still man, we're still years out from that that reaching. Um, uh, you know, the point of like you know mass adoption, full coverage, and and just like uh, you know, reaching this potential. This promises i'm not gonna directly disagree with you but i'm going to remind you of what happened with lte where verizon started rolling it out it was not very successful because there just wasn't in enough cities and things like that and then the uh, at&t buyout of t-mobile collapsed in which case t-mobile got a 5.8 billion dollar settlement out of it as part of the the Mm -hmm. failure clause and they used a vast majority of that to build their LTE structure in a matter of a few months. It, they went from almost no LTE to practically nationwide coverage. In fact, for a while there, uh, maybe six or eight months after the, um, the AT&T deal collapsed, they were the leader mm-hmm. nationwide in LTE coverage. And that caused Verizon to spur a huge movement to increase their LTE and that caused AT&T to do the same. So you went from LTE being fledgling. If you were in a market, it was great. If you weren't, it didn't exist. To six months later, it was the prominent signal in the U.S. So mm-hmm. I don't know that there's any major things like that going on right now to, to do the 5G. But I wouldn't be so sure that 5G doesn't have some sort of massive uh, surge of popularity and usefulness in a very short period of time, you know, something under a year, uh, just just because it's happened before. Sure, yeah, I'd, I'd be I'd be surprised if the coverage um, is is where they want it to be. Like uh, in urban areas, sure, but like further away from uh, from cities. Right. No, uh, it, a year is pretty quick. I'm I'm gonna say it's going to it's gonna go somewhere in between the 3G and LTE rollouts because the 3G rollout took took years took years Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for us to have nationwide 3g just because nobody was using media and there's no demand for 3g because there's no media because no one was using the media right and then once we had the media lte we needed lte like you know people were demanding lte and then that big Mm -hmm. deal happened t-mobile did what they did so i'm going to say that the 5g is going to lie somewhere in between those two extremes 
But keep in mind, AT and T's been been saying five G for, you know, enhanced LTE, calling it five G for quite a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, and all, I mean, all the big cellular companies have been touting, you know, 5G network, 5G well, network for at least a couple of years now. Yeah. And I mean, looking at looking at Verizon's map, it's still barely anywhere. But I, I could see a big surge. But uh, we'll, 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 yeah, that, that's, well, we'll see. That's a fun prediction to talk about. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Real quick. Squid um, says people will finally revolt against Apple. Um, and, no. <laughs> and, um, BK, on a similar note, says Apple reduces the serviceability of all their products even further, and people continue to screw themselves in the ass by buying them. All right, so a couple of uh, non-Apple fans. That's fine. (laughs) That's fine. All right, Amos, what do you have for uh, your science predictions for a year from now? I'm calling it now. There's going to be a major CRISPR human cloning slash modification scandal uh, that that will Hmm. be reported. I don't know that the details will finally come out, but something is going to happen where someone's been doing some crazy shit with CRISPR on humans, and mm. it's going to cause a massive fucking uproar. Okay, are are we? Are, are you thinking uh, like cloning or like like um, modification to existing organisms? Well, like, like uh, enhancements and things. CRISPR specifically is genetic modification. Yeah. Um, but I'm putting the cloning in there as well because I know this is already happening in China. I know it is. Mm-hmm. I've seen the reports. I've seen the rumors, things like that. It's already happening in China. Yeah. We just don't know about it yet. But I'm saying in, in the next year, I see. In the next year, the story is going to come out, and this shit's going to be insane. It's going to. So put- it's going to be like. It's kind of going to be like Dolly the sheep. Yes. Uh, when that was announced, uh, but possibly bigger. Uh, because we're talking about humans. Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. I have a uh, pretty modest prediction. Um, COVID-19 will finally be under control sometime in 2022, and it'll be rare to see a person in a mask. Mm. Yeah. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, let's see. Curtis. Um, uh, more space shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's um yeah I think that's that's guaranteed. Um, W's got us one. Thank you for the raid. Oh yes, misery is my middle name. Raid. Thank you guys. Um yeah, so we're talking about the future, and um I um uh, let's see where where are we at? So um SpaceX. We're talking about um, SpaceX and um, their exclusivity on a lot of NASA contracts and the speed at which that company is doing uh, launches and um, all sorts of space initiatives. I, yeah, absolutely. I, I guarantee that that, that prediction is going to come true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Squid says that everything in goop is proven true on April 1st, but the masses keep preaching it as fact until proven wrong again on April 2nd. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, BK says uh, science continues to show that conservatives are full of shit. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. How about uh, uh, some some socioeconomic stuff there, Kent? Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So I'm predicting that minimum wage will be increased, which will bolster some local economies, but unintentionally fuck others. Okay. Um, I I think minimum wage, even if it doesn't pass, you know, minimum wage increase, even if it doesn't pass federally, um, I think some communities will, you know, states and lower. Um, will pass some legislation on that, um, which I think overall I'm a fan of increase to the middle or to the um, minimum wage, but I'm concerned because minimum wage doesn't mean the same thing. Like the dollar value doesn't mean the same in all communities. So everybody's talking right. about like $15 minimum wage. $15 is a hell of a lot of a different thing between Alamogordo, New Mexico, and New York City or right. Los Angeles. Right. Like it does not mean the same thing. So when we right. when we try to pass legislation to you know make things even across the board, that's not possible. That is economically just not possible. It's not viable in right. any way. So and, and and I think also let's not intentions for, are, are going to end up fucking some people. Uh let's not forget that the minimum wage, if we were to look at the current inflation, you know, the, the inflation track to current minimum wage. Uh, to keep it in line with what it was back in the 60s would be about $33 an hour. So even $15 an hour isn't going to 
isn't going to close the wealth gap by any major amount. Anyway, um, for me, I put a I went, I went kind of a, a similar direction, not not too far off. Uh, inflation bubble bursts just as people return to workspaces. COVID variant takes hold in third world countries, spreads to the U.S. and is not taken seriously. Okay, so hmm. Okay, so are you are you predicting like um, like a brand new pandemic or? Just this one doesn't really ever go away. I'm thinking this one doesn't really ever go away. It's it's gonna it's gonna just kind of stay around. Uh, it'll it'll be a new variant. It'll maybe not even be COVID nineteen. It'll be COVID twenty one because it's just it's enough of a variant to you know warrant it's it's a change in the name or whatever. But I I don't I don't think the COVID thing is gonna go away. And I think those of us that have been vaccinated will uh, of course this might be a little self-prophecy but those of us that have been vaccinated will be have to go through the process again because it's just different enough mm. okay all right um let's see curtis let me look for a highlight here okay weed uh he says it will not significantly help poor people and communities that were targeted by drug wars no um, no he's, he's absolutely correct yeah, significantly. The, yeah, I don't think it will hurt. Um, the, but the weed, yeah, I don't think it's going to be the savior that everyone is hoping. The cannabis industry aids three types of people. It aids the user of cannabis because now it is no longer illegal and they don't have to worry about being threatened with jail time, and fines, all that kind of stuff for the typical user. Uh, it helps rich white people that are doing the investments in the cannabis companies because that's mm-hmm. that's how investments in America work. It helps rich white mm-hmm. people, mostly men, and it helps. Um, well, it would help local uh, municipalities, counties, cities, as far as tax revenue. It would help them, but it's not going to be used in a way that actually benefits the people that are paying the taxes. It will. It will help with. It'll increase budgets to where now they can spend more money on stupid contracts that shouldn't be issued and all that kind of shit. Like it's not going to be effectively used because that's not what government does. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Squid says a new stupid trend will launch every two weeks. Everyone will do it. Everyone will fail at it and it will happen again and again. Uh, Squid, welcome to social media. Um, I, I, yep. I was going to say, I'd put money on that one being true. Yeah. And BK says universal healthcare continues to only elude Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know about only, but it'll definitely continue to elude us for well, sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, what about politics, Amos? Where, where you um, I think uh, I think in twenty twenty two, Republicans are going to take the House and the Senate. Hmm. I think they're going to take both. Okay. And then it'll, it'll, it'll be Republicans... it'll be a lame lame duck presidency or lame duck term. The twenty twenty three twenty twenty four term will be lame duck because you the president won't be able to get anything passed and Congress won't be able to get anything signed. Okay. Yeah, I said that uh, Republicans will retake the Senate. Uh, it's probably I, I'd say it's the coin toss uh, for the for the House. Yeah. Uh, uh, we shall see. Let's see. What did um, what did Curtis predict here? Um, uh, see, mostly centered around the economy. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, see, we might hear the term white supremacy come up more often, but I'm not convinced it will lead to much change. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, if the last few years have been in any indication, uh, yeah. Now, the one thing I will say, though, that the conversation is more, um, it's happening more often and in places that it hadn't happened before, or it's happening more often in places where it wasn't happening much before. Let, let me put it that way. Um, so, if there's any good that comes out of that, I mean, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping there's some change. Um, but yeah, like like global scale or, or countrywide scale, like changes that actually matter forever, or, um, like lasting change. Yeah, my hopes are not high for 2022. Higher frequency of conversations, same rate of change. Yeah, okay. Um, let's see, BK says, conservatives continue to completely ignore science. I think we can kind of figure out where BK's at on uh, yeah <laughs> on a lot of his thoughts. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, what about a personal prediction for 2022, Amos? I'm going to predict, and this is something I'm working really hard on. If you listen to the pre-show, 
I'm going to predict that I get my first paid photography gig. Mm. It's something I've been okay. pursuing for a while. I've been doing a lot of practice, been kind of putting my name out there and getting, putting some, you know, publishing some more photos. I think I'll actually finally get my first. Now, it may not be a primary. I may be like secondary or second shooter on a wedding or something like that, but it'll be a paid gig and it'll, uh, I'll be able to market his income. That's my prediction. Right on. Be able to, and be able to throw that on your resume. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, you, for myself, you, use I'm that thinking. use that to pay off the camera equipment I've recently bought. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm predicting more community involvement for myself. Um, I do a lot of talking about it and not enough doing. <laughs> and I think um, I'm slowly but surely becoming more motivated to do more things. Mm. And um, as the pandemic uh, lessens and the restrictions. Uh, lighten up on a lot of things. I see myself getting out there a lot more. So hopefully sometime in 2022, I'll be doing a lot more things in the public space. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's cruise on into the, the, well, you know, you, you've got some other people, right? Some other personal stuff. Uh, from Actually, from let's see. I, let's see if I got any um, submissions for the personal. Okay. Um, let's see. Squid pre predicts that he will get off his ass, beg for Jay's forgiveness and start recording mixtape again. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be cool yeah I, th I think he's overstating the situation but um uh yeah squid's mixtape had to take a break for uh just changes in people's personal lives and things that are going on moves and and whatnot and uh they just haven't uh started it back up yeah. and i'm yeah i think within the next year it's very much a doable thing and i look forward to to seeing that um, BK says, uh, I spend way too much time and money making up for not being able to leave my house for the previous 18 months. Yeah. So he's, he's, um, it looks like he's going to personally save the economy <laughs> in the coming year. <laughs> he's going to American. That's what he's going to do. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? No, let's move on to five the year, year 2026, which is five years from now. Um, back over to the tech column, Amos. Yep. What do you What do you think? I'm gonna go with a little bit of a little bit of Curtis here. Uh, AR finds a purpose in day to day life that makes it the must have tech for all devices. Because right now it just doesn't have a purpose. It's like a cool fucking party trick, but nobody knows really what to use it for that you really need in your life. And I think it's gonna find that. It's got you know this is five years from now. It's gonna it's gonna find its function. <laughs> yeah, I mean something more than Pokemon Go. Like, come on. Um, yeah, I'm on the exact same page here. Um, I said five years from now we're going to have – or uh, that AR-enabled smart devices will be ubiquitous. Um, think Google Glass. So I very much believe that uh, glasses and even maybe contact lenses and, and devices like that, um, even uh, like a windshield of your car perhaps, will have an AR layer. Mm. Um, we are addicted to information already. And I think AR is going to uh, make that addiction even more uh, more pronounced within the next five there, years. There was a company that was doing a test on AR uh, contacts, but it was still corded, which mm. made it really awkward. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> AR, I think uh, we're unified in our predictions for AR. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can get a highlight here from Curtis. Let's see. Whatever car shit Apple is planning will actually be out finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think they're going to continue to enhance car play. Um, mm, I don't know. Who knows, man? Five years from now? Uh, uh, I, like, I like this one. PC part scarcity would be an unfortunate new norm. Things will... Things will be better, but PC building will settle hard into enthusiast-only era where you have to really want it to be willing to shell out more time and money. Yeah, I, I could see uh, that happen. Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, I think it's more... I mean, it, it, it's mostly the, the graphics cards, right? Like, I mean, other parts aren't that scarce, are they? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, it has been... GM recently had to start selling, selling their trucks Probably. without a certain chip because they couldn't get them, and then it... it uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so they're actually just selling the trucks without that, that, that feature. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's all, that's all we've got for user input for, um, for that category. For any category, really, for the five-year one. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, Kent, what about science? Man, where, where are we going to be in science in five years? Um, I said humans return to the moon. Okay. Like I think that's. Um, it's pretty yeah, safe. I think we're going to be back to the moon. I think um, you, you know there's going to be over the next not just in five years but over the next five years. I think there's going to be a lot more conversation about uh, human space exploration, getting more people into space, going to. Well, the moon, obviously, but also other objects, asteroids, Mars, eventually, yeah. um, things like that. What about I'm, you, dude? I'm lined in right with you, except I think it's going to be a little bit further. I think the few, first human flight to Mars is going to be actually scheduled. It's going to be in the books. Like mm. it's going to be, they're they're going to um, be they're going to have a date, like a solid date. Yeah, hey, do, we're launching on this month. Do you want to do you want to go for the long shot and and guess on a a year? Like how far out are we? Do you think from going to Mars? Uh oh well I think they'll have it scheduled in 2026. I think it'll actually be planned to launch in 27 or 28. Wow wow, that's much more accelerated than I would guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, well, because okay. we're going to go to the back to the moon. We're going to learn some lessons there, and that's just going to get people excited. And then it, it's going to be a, basically a new space race. Um, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And and I guess I mean. Going back to what I was saying about SpaceX, um, like they are just rapidly accelerating all of this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the private space industry as a whole, but in particular SpaceX. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, that's not unlikely. All right, um, what's Curtis got to say? Because he's the only one who gives five year, and then he didn't give us any ten year, but everybody else gave us ten year, so it's, it works out. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, he also predicts more space shit. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Um, yeah, he says um, COVID nineteen uh, post mortem. Uh, we're still going to be talking about the pandemic. Yeah, no doubt. Um, let's see, we'll find another deep sea fish that looks like a Pokemon. <laughs> I like that one actually. Uh, climate change will be just a little more terrifying. I almost put that almost word for word. Um, yeah, I mean, climate change, it's, it is happening. It's undeniable. Um, but I think we're going to, the more time that goes on, I think the more we're going to realize that, um, we've already fucked ourselves and there's not a way to just like turn it off. Uh, we're going to be talking more about mitigations than we will be about like, how do we slow it down? Like flying to Mars. All right. How about uh socioeconomic? <laughs> Socioeconomic for five years from now, I say. Okay, so this is actually um, contentious, uh, a little bit contentious with something that Curtis said. But I, <clears throat> so the first part is uh, is new. I said that cheap and or free academic and technical education uh, will become available and will increase employment. Um, also, recreational drug legalization or or decriminalization, decriminalization at the very least. Uh, but and I'm I'm predicting that both of those things together will decrease crime and incarceration rates. Um, I'm not saying that those things are going to uh, change the game completely, but I think the numbers will go down if those two boxes are checked. Okay. Uh, really, man, if we just get rid of paid paid to play prisons, like let's just get rid of that would prisons. be that would be that'd be a start. Oh my god! Yeah. Just just do that. Just, just, just do that, and there's so many people that would be let out for such stupid shit. Anyway, um, I mean that plus a lot more black judges and female judges and things like that. Just anyway, uh, my my five year socioeconomic uh, reparations legislation will finally have the support to pass, but it will be crippled from the start without enough funding to adequately make a positive change. It'll yeah. it'll be the fine. We're gonna do this. It's enough to say that we did something, and it'll get people off our ass for the next twenty years. But it was not gonna actually be enough to actually fucking close the wealth gap. Yeah, and I think that's um, yeah, that's probably right because right now there is um, there is an initiative to form a commission. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, which the commission itself is a little bit prob problematic uh, the way that they've set it up. But even if it if it happens, uh, the dollar amount that they're talking about is um, just an astronomical number. Eleven trillion dollars, uh, according to yeah. marketplace research. Right. So if that comes, I mean, oh man, I just don't know. I just don't know that. 
Congress, regardless of the makeup, um, right, left, somewhere in the middle. Um, I, mm, I'm not holding my breath for it to pass. Is all I'm, right. Is all I'm gonna say there. I, I think uh, again, I think it'll, I think something will pass, but it'll be so crippled that it, it'll essentially yeah, it be won't ineffective. Yeah, it will be that number probably. Or, yeah. or it'll be something where there are so people that that uh, that actually qualify for it. Like it looks good, uh, the 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 top notes, the top lines look great, but once you start getting into the details, like there's only thirty thousand people that qualify it for it out of the two hundred and ten thousand people that should qualify for it. Well, you know, some, something stupid like that. It's yeah. There's a, yeah. There's yeah. yeah exactly. The devil is going to be in the details. Yeah. Um, and Curtis in the chat says um, he thinks the farthest this administration will get is. The conversation. Which, yeah, which I, I mean, mean, that's something. At least the conversation is happening. That's but, step one. But it, it, go, it goes to what we were saying about about the 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 the, uh, the white supremacy issue. Like, there's gonna be there's more talk about it, but there's the stale the same rate of change, which is currently fucking yeah. zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, so, yeah. That's that's the key. I mean, you gotta follow up talk with action. So yeah. Um. um so Curtis in his five year prediction. Um, uh, oh, talking about weed again, he says, um, uh, very, very much hoping here, uh, but at this point, there will be a pattern of weed money being funneled back into communities damaged by weed policing. Um, yeah, so that, that is one of the, that's one of the major pluses to governments when, when it talks about legalization of weed is the influx of money, tax money. And each jurisdiction, so like each state, um, gets to choose what to do with that extra money. Some of them have been using it for infrastructure and different things like that. Um, I think this does need to be prioritized. Uh, communities have been fucking devastated by the war on drugs and over-policing and all of that kind of shit. Yep. And if they take at least some of this money to try to reverse some of the damage that's been caused, um, that, that would go along. That yeah, I think and it's and there's great. there's so many things that you could do with it, but they're I, I just don't have faith in in our current government the way that it is. It's too obfuscational. Yeah, well, here's the hoping. Yeah, all right. How about politics, man? Yeah. Um. Let's see. So I said, President Harris will be a lame duck early in her first term because of a hostile Republican majority House and Senate. Hmm. I went a little bit of a different direction. Biden doesn't seek a second term, which aligns with what you just said. Harris loses the nomination to a hard left woman. I think uh, something along the lines of AOC or Ilan Omar, something like that. Um, uh, but then Dems will ultimately lose the presidential bid to a hard right woman. So someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene, some fucking whack job like that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. I can't even. Yeah, uh, that, wow. that's that's okay. that's my prediction. That's true, dysto truly I, dystopian. I, I, I um, think the the Democrat Party will just oof. and and this will come come up in my in my ten year version of it. But uh, I think the Democrat Party is going to ha is facing some hard times very soon between oh. between the yeah. the ultra liberal and the middling road. Yeah, well, I've, I mean, I think both parties are are facing. Uh, um, you know, infighting and stuff like that, uh, ideological splits and things like that. Sure, I, but the but the I don't think the conservatives have the backbone to actually do anything about it, and the left will express their backbone by destroying themselves. So that's just me. Interesting. Okay, <laughs> I mean, if I was going to predict, I would think it'd be the other party. But uh, okay, who knows, man? Hopefully, hopefully, neither of those things happen. <laughs> um. Let's see where, where are we at here. Uh, Curtis with politics five years from now. Um, we will probably be recovering from a very weird election year. Yes, that goes hand in hand with Amos's prediction. I believe that's and, true. And yours. And yours, really. Climate change will probably be more of a conversation. The politics around treating fossil fuels like religion will probably be slightly more shaky, um, but not very much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. More climate change stuff. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, what about personal predictions for you, dude, for five years from now? I will, th I think, uh, photography and videography will be my primary source of non VA income of my non okay. air force retirement related income. I think, uh, photography and videography will be the primary source of that, uh, based on the fact that 
people always want photographers and videographers to record events, to have save those special memories, to share them and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Podcasting is so convoluted right now that even when I, like right now, that's my primary source of non-VA income is my podcasting work. Um, and I just, I don't know that that's growing as much. Plus if it comes to brass tax, um, brax tax, I'm far more passionate about photography and I have been for longer than I am about podcasting as passionate as I am about podcasting. Uh, photography will yeah. always be my first love. So, yeah. And I think, um, I think podcasting more and more is going to go the way of, um, like studio, like, like established studios. Mm. Uh, I think the like traditional as far media, as as far as more money is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I think traditional media is going to, uh, they're already well on their way to like taking over the, um, you know, quote mainstream podcasting. Mm -hmm. So if you go to any podcast app and look at, at, um, the shows that are, are promoted to you suggestions and, and recommendations and all that sort of stuff, it's always from big studios. Like you don't get like now, granted, I don't expect ritual misery podcast to show up on those lists. Um, but like some of these like really, um, fantastic niche, uh, independent shows just, they don't pop up on those lists. It's always, it's money. You know what I mean? And it's like, you gotta have money to make money kind of thing. Yep. And I think it's just going to get worse and worse. Um, normal dudes like us will still be allowed to make podcasts and we'll still do it and we'll still put it out there. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's going to be, we're, we're going to have less and less and less of the market share. Yep. So, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's fair. Um, I'm, I'm predicting that I'll be considering retirement from federal service altogether. Um, I will be at or just above, uh, 10 years of post military federal service. Mm hmm. And uh, I think that's probably going to be enough for me. <laughs> yeah. I thought 20 years was going to be enough. Um, yeah. I need, it turns out I needed some income in a, a readily available job with a suitable income to pay my current bills. And uh, I think at the end of 10 years of that, I think I'll finally be in a place where I don't need it anymore. Smoke weed every day. There you go. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What, what's Curtis see got what to say? Yeah. So, um, oh, um, he no, no one has filled out the call. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, well, then we'll move on to our tenure. Uh, these are going to be a little bit, probably a little bit quicker because we're getting a little low on time. Um, I'm saying in ten years we will have our first uncontrolled AI experiment in the wild. We've had AI experiments go haywire in controlled environments on specific networks without access to the internet and things like that. I'm saying that that is that 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 box, that Pandora's box of AI in the wild, uncontrolled and self-developing, will finally be opened, and someone will make that mistake, and we will have uncontrolled AI in the wild. Wow, um, and not able to rein it back in? Well, possibly. I mean, there there could be, but it, it 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 will be something that takes more than just shutting a computer off or turning off a an isolated router. It'll be something major. Yeah, I, I feel like we'd have to write a virus to kill it. Right. And have everyone install it. Like, hey, this virus. Normally, we tell you not to, uh, but we want everyone to install this virus. Well, they, they'll just they just call it a patch. Right. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but I, I think but, that but a self replicating patch that spreads virally <laughs> <laughs> to counteract the intelligent patch we already virally spread. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think something like that will, will, will happen. I, th I think we're, we're edging towards that. Uh, and I think someone within the next 10 years will make that mistake. Okay. And then so Cyberdyne, Sky Cy Cyberdyne will be born. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was Exactly. <laughs> Skynet will take over. Got it. Um, so I'm predicting that implantable biotech will be finally technically and financially viable for consumers. Okay. Uh, so basically like, um, like medical monitoring type stuff. So it'll measure your vital signs, so basically like what your Apple watch can do, but it's inside your body. Right. Mm. So, uh, not just heart rate and, and, uh, you know, activity and stuff like that, but like, like literally like it, it's got your internal temperature, 
um, all, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, also, like the the uh, chemical contents of your body, so it'll know like if you if you're like de- got... li- like lacking carbos or if you're yes, if you're exactly. low in carbohydrates so, or yep. uh, uh, not carbohydrates, uh, the the fuck are the salts? Um, salts, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, sodium, uh, all of that stuff, right? Like it's, it's going to monitor your levels. So if you need to make a modification, electrolytes, thank you, Curtis. Yes. It'll, it'll be able to check your yeah, electrolyte well. level, like, hey, your, your blood sugar you're and thirsty. shit. Go drink a yeah. glass of water. Um, but also like presence of pathogens, you know, stuff like that. It, it will rec- make recommendations, you know, like changes in behavior or whatnot, or like, yo, you need to go see a doctor. You got some cancer in you. What if you know, what if okay. this is tied in with that uncontrolled AI? This could be fucking weird. All right, let's uh let's move on to something a little safer. <laughs> okay, well hold on. Let's see what um let's see if any of our uh, folks made a prediction. Here. Uh, it's just BK um, from here on out. It's just BK. Yeah. So he says, uh, 3D printing is supplanted by 4D printing, and custom one-off objects uh, you need will start appearing before you even know that you need them. Okay. Okay. So not only is, is so it's like think 3D printing, but can also um, uh, travel through time <laughs> and space. Look, uh, this is 10 years from now, man. The last 100 years have been fucking crazy. I'm not putting anything to the side. Yeah. All right. What, uh, what about science, dude? Uh, science. I'm going to go uh, see this first time. I'm not in the right tab. Um, major discovery, uh, either a new particle, extraterrestrial life or um, extra dimensional physics causes a catastrophic rift in the religious communities. Oh, interesting. So so science proves the existence of something that um, that some religions say that don't exist, or so, certain congregations, certain pastors right. um, uh, discredit. I, I mean, I mean the, the easiest one here to, to, to summarize and explain, because I'm not a physicist and I barely understand the shit that I ingest as far as that shit goes, uh, so I'm not going to try to repeat it, but... Mm. Say, for instance, and I think this is the furthest one off, um, because the universe is intelligent as we've... Anyway. Um, <laughs> let's just say that the universe is intelligent and is, it, it, the universe is modifying the rules of physics as we discover them. But that's a different story. If we discover that we are living in a, in a simulation, okay, how fucked would the religious community be? I'm not saying that that's it gets what into all sorts of. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that's what it'll it'll happen, debate. but but as far as like major rift, that's what I'm thinking. Within within the next ten, ten years, there's going to be a scientific discovery of some sort. Uh, particularly, I think extra dimensional physics is I, is the the, mm. the big one there. Um, but I think there'll there'll be something that really causes uh, major religions, Christianity, Islam. You know, Judaism, the, the the basically the Abrahamic religions, uh, causes them to really renegotiate their beliefs versus our understanding of the universe. Yeah, I think I think discovery of of life on other planets um, would do that. So, like, if we discovered like, um, you know, like, um, you know, dead bacteria on Mars or something like that, or I living bacteria on Mars, or li- I mean, yeah, living would be terrifying uh, but cow. okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah like that would be you know that's a fundamental change in how people typically um you know view our place as humans in the universe right so yeah interesting all right so i am predicting uh 10 years from now that mrna vaccine technology uh, just might eliminate the flu and the common cold possibly even hiv and other communicable diseases you bring up HIV and all I can say is that if we had put as much attention, effort and science into HIV and AIDS as we did the COVID vaccine, Mm -hmm. we could have fucking been done with it by now. Like there's no doubt in my fucking mind. We could be done with HIV and AIDS by now. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 I I have no doubt. Um, It's, it fucking saddens me. Yeah, uh, but I. But anyway, so, so the point of my thing is, I think um, I think our new uh, vaccine technologies are going to elim- start eliminating 
like basically just make a checklist and just start checking them off um, over the next 10 years. Yeah. It's not going to completely eliminate uh, communicable disease, but I think, I think we're going to make some strides uh, toward that. Yeah. But then also the worry of if we start eliminating diseases, what's that going to do to our population number? What's, what's that going to do with the life balance of earth? And <laughs> just like if you're constantly using antibacterial soap, all you're doing really is breeding stronger bacteria that are resistant to the antibacterials that you're using. What will that do if we are? Yeah, but I, I don't know, man, because like if you just look over the last couple hundred years, uh, the the diseases that we have basically gotten rid of, uh, you know, plagues and you know, black death and all just all this kind of crap that right. like was killing people by, you know, the hundreds of thousands in a year, like decimate, like taking percentage points of our human population in a year, um, you know, and we haven't bred a superbug that's doing that again. You know what I mean? Because the advancements in our medical technology, not just in vaccines, but like everything, just knowledge of cleanliness and, um, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, so, I, so many. I, I agree. But that doesn't mean, I mean, all of these things we're talking about right now are forms of life. And I strongly believe that fucking nature finds a way. Yes, you know, I, I was just. I I also believe that humanity is the scourge of the planet, and that uh, Mother Earth will eventually shake us off like a bad set of fleas. Uh, uh, yeah, the diseases are the are the Earth's antibodies. Yes, uh, tribute to yeah. Carlin for that train of thought. Um, yeah, but yeah, I just I uh, it's one of those things. It's not uh, the knock the knock on effects of us getting rid of all these major diseases and having, you know what I mean, like. There's just something to be thought of. Like that's a conversation to be had. It's not a simple solution of let's just get rid of all the shit. But um, maybe at least some of the big ones we can get rid of. Like right, like like yeah. HIV and and fucking uh, what's that shit? The mosquito spread. Uh, you know, and, um, all kinds of stuff. And, um, and, and chlamydia. Yep. Can we just get rid of chlamydia? That'd be cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. I've never had it, but I heard it's not fun to have, and it's really easy to catch. I mean, can we just, oh, like, go ahead and knock that out? Anyway. All right, so Squid, <laughs> or I'm sorry, um, BK, mm -hmm. um, in the in the uh, category of science. Malaria. Thank you, now. Curtis. Curtis, come with all the fucking answers tonight. Malaria. Uh, so BK says, the sudden appearance of custom-printed objects causes about causality and the nature of space-time. Scientists resort to massive intakes of cannabis instead of actually worrying about it because someone from a timeline that may not actually exist sent them all some pretty sweet custom printed bongs. The sudden appearance of custom printed objects you didn't know you needed causes serious questions about the causality and the nature of space time. I wanted to reread that because one, I needed to kind of ingest it myself. And two, <laughs> you, you glitched out the entire time you're reading that part. Um, uh, he's I, I, like, is BK from the future? Um, I don't, he, he's not going to admit that. I don't think. Damn it. Okay. Well, um, interesting right. thoughts. Interesting thoughts. So in the category of socioeconomic in the year 2031, um, I, and this is more of a hope, I think, okay. uh, than an actual prediction, but I, I'm saying that universal health care, uh, uni universal basic income, tax reforms, uh, and, you know, not just a bunch of other Initiatives will will uh, increase the size of the middle class and make it the majority in the U.S., um, basically shrinking the wealth gap. Um, mm. I'm not holding my breath for this one, but I think there are certain like fairly basic things that we can do uh, economically in this country that that could seriously like get rid of the disparity between the poorest of the poor and the richest of the rich. You already know my thoughts. It's on not going to be. Yeah, I know. It's not going to be eliminated completely. That's not possible. We're still going to have multi-class. Um, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, but yeah, it's it's anyway. Yeah. Let's leave it there. That'll be a conversation for another. Uh, y your your hope uh, inspires me. Doesn't give me hope, but it inspires me. To some <laughs> right, to someday your... be as foolish as you. 
Uh, my socioeconomic uh, for 10 years out, D.C. and Puerto Rico attain a modified statehood with only one senator and one representative each. And this is uh, similar to what I said about reparations. It'll be just enough to get them off of Congress's ass, but not enough to actually affect positive change. But at uh, least they won't have taxation without representation. Yeah, I'd be surprised if those things took 10 years, actually, because there's there's actually talks right now um, about the possibility of D.C. statehood. Um, hmm. Yes, okay. yes, but it's, yeah. But you think it's but, but, but again, I don't, I, I, and this might be a thing where U.S. territories are each given one senator and one, um, one representative, but they're not actually called states. Like, you know, Guam suddenly has two representatives, one in each house. Puerto Rico has the same, you know, something like that. I can see that happening to where it, they're not states, so they don't have states' rights per se, but they do have some sort of effective representation in Congress, you know, one, one member in each house, or maybe even one member to represent all of them combined so it doesn't all throw, all throw balances and shit. But there will be mm -hmm. some sort of... Because right now they, they have... They have representatives. They don't have senators, but they have representatives. But those representatives are non-voting representatives. So they're like, yeah. they're, it's 438 well, plus three. Out, <laughs> somebody pointed out to me today, I didn't realize this. Washington, D.C. has a higher population than Montana. Right. It has a higher population than like three states. Yeah. And that's... they have no federal representation. Again, that's... they have a representative in, in, in the House, but it's a non-voting representative. It's basically just there to talk shit and take notes. <laughs> right. It, All right. BK says uh, the sudden appearance of very useful objects causes a massive crash in the economy due to a lack of purchasing. No one cares because everything they need just keeps appearing in printed form, customized to their every need. I think either BK is from the future or he was high as fuck when he was writing these predictions. One or the other. Maybe both. I don't know. Maybe there's no cannabis in the future, so he came back here just to fucking smoke up. I don't know. What is your uh, your tenure prediction for, for politics? Uh, the Democratic Party formally splits temporarily to create an ineffective three-party system. Again, this carries on from my previous one about uh, mm -hmm. the Democratic Party kind of kind of eating its own tail and not getting anything done at, at the end of that. It's just going to be there. So uh, it'll be a temporary split, and there'll be a lot of uh, a lot of fractioning going on. There might also be one in the Republican Party, but I wouldn't put my hang my hat on it because they've kind of stayed st stayed solid in the stupidity range. So, <laughs> okay. Look, when, when when the senator, the Republican senator, I most agree with is also a like crazy ass Mormon. Like, there's 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 problems in the party. <laughs> Just saying prediction is Johnson announces his candidacy for the U.S. presidency. And I'm not even going to predict which party because I also agree that in 10 years the parties are going to look a lot different than they do now. So yeah. I'm not even going to try to guess which party. If it was now, he'd be a Republican. He's, you know. Uh, did you hear Matthew McConaughey has been tossing around the idea of running for governor of Texas? I Yeah, I did hear that. Oh my God, that'd be so great. BK says, governmental superpowers convinced that the other side did it, suddenly attempt to annihilate the other side. But printed anti-missile shields uh, appear, thwarting all of that nonsense. World peace becomes inevitable now that war is impossible due to the serendipitous appearance of an item custom printed to deal with the exact threat just in time, every time. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think he was high when he wrote his business plan for his 3D printing business that he wants to run. <laughs> and he, these are all just goals on his on his sheet. That's amazing. All right, and you know what? I'm going to go ahead and wrap up um, his predictions. So his final uh, one for the category of personal. He says, "I'm just glad that I figured out how to custom print items out of any material and send them back in time, <laughs> but I won't actually know this for a few more years." <laughs> God damn it! I should have re should have pre-read all these, man. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the record, I didn't read any of them except uh, I, I clicked over to to the the guest one to just see how many guests we had going, uh, but I didn't read any of their stuff. And then I clicked over to yours to see how long yours were to make sure that I wasn't writing essays when I just needed to put a, you know four words or whatever. But I didn't read. I didn't actually like like 
consume any of any of the other people's ideas. Yeah. So, and Kurt, um, Chris Rock says, "Fuck BK was the hero all along." Right. That's that's the lesson there. All right. How about you, man? Personal uh, personal goals or personal I, not goals, but personal prediction for ten years from now. Yeah, I think I will finally be debt free and probably self employed. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not too far from that. Uh, I'm, I'm at the next stage of that actually, uh, 2031. I, I predict that I will have full blown real retirement. I will not be working for money. I will be mm. working for pleasure at, at my whim. Um, that'll be the year autumn graduates. It'll also be the year that, uh, my wife is only five years away from, uh, from her civilian retirement on top of her military retirement. So, uh, I think we'll be, I think we'll be good to go. That's my, that's my prediction. Retired right at, fi- retired at four, 54, 55 years old, like full fledged, no shit retired, just living off pensions and annuities. Yeah. 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 Dude. That's yeah. That's the fucking dream right there. Right. All right. All, um, all the beer I can't digest. <laughs> right. Just throwing up on a daily basis. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so that was our that was our future predictions um, segment. Yep. Um, how about we um, how about we take a look at the weather? Uh, well, we're gonna go from the future to the current. One city. One city. One forecast. One forecast. One word. It's Ritual Misery's One Word Weather. Brought to you by Mark Jelinek and his What Is It About the Weather podcast. All right, today on uh, KRMP, we're going to tell you the weather for Xinyu, China. It's a great little place uh, somewhere in China. How's the weather? It's cloudy. All right, that's been our weather for the day. KRMP bringing you the weather from the world. One city. One city. One forecast. One forecast. One word. <laughs> I don't know if we should be a K or a W. We're both west of the uh, of the Mississippi, so yeah, we'll have to figure that out. Yeah, I think it's the, the the most successful that that segment has has been. Ah, shit, um, might have to be might might be time to stop it. We're not gonna be able to top that shit. Next week, we're gonna talk about haunted houses, and not just reviewing haunted houses, but like actual stories. From our experiences in haunted houses, uh, Kent's got some backstage uh, experience that I'm uh, really eager to hear, and um, yeah, this will be fun. Hell yeah! And if you have some some good stories about going to haunted houses, and in particular, if you've got stories about working at a haunted house, we'd love to hear them. I'm going to make a post in there uh, tonight um, and just respond to that post uh, and tell us your stories. And we will be sure to read them um, on next week's show. And that is in the um, Discord, correct? Yes. Yep. Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. There we go. Uh, yeah. Amos, what, what, el- what else? Uh, what are the call to action should we throw out there to our fine folks? Um. Well, I'm going to say cruise on by... AnthonyLemos.com. What do you? What, what would I find there? Uh, pictures and stories, things that I don't put on Twitter because they're either a little bit longer form or they're a little more personal. And um, you also find links to all my other things and you know Instagrams and Twitters and all this stuff. How about yeah, you? Hell yeah. Def- definitely check it out. Um, some really great art happening over there. Um, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter for me, or just go to ritualmisery.com to see all the projects that we've got working on. Yeah. And it's time to hit this little button right here and tell you that we're live every Sunday. We don't know when, but cha- it's it just it's <laughs> kind of changed. Follow, I, the, follow I, the Twitter and Discord. Yeah. And, uh, I think I like this we'll time frame right here. Uh, Kent McLeod, thank you so much. And uh, for Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Rich Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-N
WCLY. All right. Hell yeah. R 